Hola et bonjour à tous. So, hi, hello, I am Miss West. I am Head of Spanish at the Perbeck School. Um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about um, the GCSE options um, in languages. So I'm going to talk to you about Spanish. I'm also going to talk to you about French. So both of the GCSEs are pretty much the same thing. We learn the same stuff. We have to do the same exams. It's just in a different language. So uh, whether you're thinking you might want to do French or you might want to do Spanish, this is the place for you to hear about it. So these are the three things I'm going to talk you through um, on this PowerPoint. So I'm going to talk to you about why you might want to take a GCSE, what, um, what are the reasons that people um, choose to take a language, um, what do we study, what exactly do you go through in the two years of the GCSE, and then finally the question I always get asked, what are those exams like, what do I have to do in the exams? So we'll go through all of that. So as a linguist, I love languages and I could give you about a million reasons why I think you should take a language GCSE. But ultimately, I want to give you some sort of tangible points some things of, um, you know, where, where you will be able to see where it will come in. It, it will come in useful. Now, um, in the world of work, it is an incredibly useful skill to be able to speak another language. You never know when it might come in handy. Um, no matter what area of, of work, no matter what sector you go into, being able to speak another language is always going to come in useful. You know, being able to go, oh, yeah, I speak a bit of Spanish. I speak a bit of French. You might have clients to deal with that um, speak in that language or there might be documents. I can't tell you the number of times I've been given a document in French or in Spanish to look at. Um, and I think a lot of people don't quite realise how often it comes up. OK, so a really, really useful skill. Um, the GCSE, a language GCSE, is really well regarded by sick forms and colleges and particularly universities. It's it's not an easy GCSE by by any um, by any stretch, but it is it shows a willingness to open oneself to culture and to another language. And, and I think for a lot of universities that shows them a certain type of person. Um, and so if you have a language GCSE, I know that it is looked on favourably by um, lots of universities. Um, and a big one for me, and it's because it's been completely what's happened to me, it opens doors to so many different countries, cultures, and, and like I've said before, career paths. So not only have I travelled to lots of different countries in the world, you can see, um, I put a little map there, there's so many countries in Latin America that speak Spanish, obviously minus Brazil, you can pretty much travel anywhere in Central and South America and, and, and you'd be understood if you spoke some Spanish. OK, same as uh, as French. You can go to Quebec in, in Canada. You can go to um, some countries in Africa. The, you know, again, it can take you somewhere that you've never thought of going to before. Um, and that's that's an amazing opportunity, amazing opportunity. And um, we also dip into the culture a lot. So you learn about different celebrations, amazing things that they do in, in their countries. And, you know, it, it's it's. It's an opportunity to discover somebody else's world, which I think is really cool. Um, I've just put a little um, bit of information about different jobs. I literally just searched. Uh, languages and there's so many different types of jobs careers that come up where a language is highly desirable so you know if you, if you were to go to an interview and, and over somebody else you had an additional language that would definitely work in your favour. Now I realise there's quite a lot of information on this slide um, but don't worry I'll talk you through it in, in steps. So these are the topics that you cover in both 
the French and the Spanish GCSE. So you have three main themes. So three main big items that we do. So they are identity and culture, local, national, international and global areas of interest, and then current and future study and employment. So they all fun fall under those brackets, those big brackets. So in year 10, when you come in, you start off with and you do a bit about relationships with family and friends. So as you can see, you go back over certain topics that you've seen at Key Stage 3. So it's not all new. We just add to it. We, we um, add depth to your knowledge. We make it a bit more complicated. We look at the grammar involved in some of these um, uh, that are associated with it. So, for example, with relationships, we look at get on well with, the verb to get on well with, marriage and partnership, and then we look at technology and social media. Uh, a little bit later on in year 10, about spring term, you move into free time activities, so sport, music, cinema and TV, and then food and eating out. Um, we end on a topic that I love, customs and festivals. So it's all about things that are celebrated in um, Spain, Latin American countries, France and uh, other Francophone countries. So what things do they do that make no sense to us? A bit like trying to explain Guy Fawkes Night to, to somebody who who isn't from the UK. Um, so you can see I've put a picture at the top um, right hand corner there of La Tomatina. So La Tomatina is effectively a big food fight. Um, in Buñol in the north of Spain. So they throw tomatoes at each other um, and they have a massive food fight. It's, it's an incredible, an incredible festival. Um, so we learn a lot about that. Lots of different things that you may never heard of before. And, and that's that's something that's quite powerful. Um, then later on, towards the end of year 10, you look a little bit about talking about your home, where you live, um, your town. Uh, and then we go into things like voluntary work, healthy, unhealthy lifestyles, the environment, poverty, homelessness, and then travel and tourism. And that leads you into year 11. So theme two kind of covers end of year 10, part of year 11. And then um, then you do the last topic, the last theme in year 11, all about school, your studies, your plans for the future, etc. So it's quite broad. There's quite a lot of things that we cover. Um, like I said, within each topic, you cover some cultural aspects. We cover a bit of grammar. We cover um, obviously vocab and, and things like you would have done in your lessons at the moment. Now, I don't want to put you off, so I'm not going to talk about the exams for too long. Um, there are four of them. So there are four exams in total uh, when you do a language. So you have uh, a listening paper, a reading paper, a speaking paper and a writing paper. But it's not as bad as it sounds, I promise. So this is an example of what the listening paper looks like. So um, you can read it for yourself in your own time, but it's it's fairly simple. You've got a recording, you listen to it. And you answer questions. Some of them are multiple choice, um, like you can see the example here that I've given you. And the last part of the exam, the questions are in Spanish and your answers are in Spanish. But again, a lot of those are multiple choice, which is not so bad. OK, so here you will have seen examples of these at Key Stage 3. So here you have local development plans in Argentina. So is it a positive opinion? Put a P. Is it negative? N. P and N for positive and negative. You will have seen this type of question in your language lessons anyway, but fairly simple. Now, paper two has quite a few different aspects to it. It's a speaking exam. Now, the biggest part which you can see at the bottom there, general conversation, 30 marks. That's where most of your marks come from, can be pre-prepared. So we prepare the questions that we're going to ask you. And we're basically trying to have a conversation. 
So I might ask you about, um, do you have, do you have a big family? Do you think that's important? Things like that. So, but you will know in advance the type of question that we're going to be asking you. So that's, that's the last part of it. It's just a conversation. The other two parts, you've got a role play. So it will give you a scenario. You've got time to prepare that um, at the start of the exam. You're allowed to write down your answers and you're allowed to read them. So it could be something like um, you're at a train station and you're asking for a ticket um, to go to Barcelona, something like that. Um, and you have to have a sort of a, a conversation in, in a role play. And then the other part is a photo card. So I've given you an example of that photo card. So you would have the photo that you can see above. And the simple question is, what's in the photo? So you have to describe that photo. So for example, in the photo I can see uh, five people. Um, I can see a birthday cake. Um, it looks like they're celebrating, parece que celebran, something like that. OK, so and then you get some follow up questions that would be linked to that photo card. Now, the reading exam is very much like the uh, listening exam. Um, it's a lot like exercises that you will have done at Key Stage 3. So you have texts and you have questions. And then a lot of the time, well, some of the time it will be multiple choice. Some of the time you'll have to give a more, um, a more developed answer. OK, and there is a translation at the end of that exam and it's a translation from Spanish into English. Now, you've done a lot of practice on those um, during this year and last year. Um, so a simple translation into English. So the last one is all about um, writing and it's different depending on what tier you're in, you're in and that is a decision that we make um, together. Um, it's basically about free writing. They want you to write freely about certain topics. So they'll give you a topic, you have to write freely about it. And there is a small amount of translation into Spanish. So it's more more tough than the translation into English that you get in the reading exam. Um, so you have structured writing tasks. So you get given bullet points. So, for example, it would ask you, tell me about your past holiday. And then you'd have to talk about a past holiday. And then it would say, um, where do you want to live in the future? So you'd have to talk about that. So there's certain aspects that they ask you to do and certain aspects that are free. As long as you're within the topic, you're fine. Um, the foundation exam is a little bit different. You have a photo to describe, um, which most of you would have seen examples of. And yeah, it's I think this is the one that people think is is going to be really tough. But actually, um, I'll show you on another slide something that my year 10 has managed to produce this year. And it's it. We we work very hard on the structure. We work very hard on getting you ready for these um, writing parts so that you you don't you don't feel lost. Now, this is an example of something that a year 10 produced in a mock exam. So it was in exam conditions and, and it's brilliant. There's a few bits here and there that they need to they need to work on. But there is a range of different tenses. There is an incredible amount of opinions and reasons and lots of really great things. And what I want you to understand is this this is a this is a pupil that um, is the same as you guys. Um, they've worked hard and they followed the structure and this is pretty much near perfect marks on an exam um, for that writing task. So she, I think she got one mark down from, from perfect marks. So it, it's, it's feasible, it's doable, and it's, 
we we would support you 100% um, in doing those tasks. So um, I think I've talked you through all the points that um, I plan to. Um, we normally have quite small classes, so you get a really good attention from your teacher. Um, it's a really nice environment to learn because all, all of the people want, you know, have the same desire to learn that language. Um, in previous years, there have been trips. Um, we're not really sure how that's going to go over the next couple of years, so I can't promise anything. Um, but we did do a trip to Valencia and it is something that we're looking to get back. But obviously, the situation being as it is, I can't I can't promise anything. Um, I would really encourage you if you've got any questions, if you've got any further queries, you want to know something, then come and ask me. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I say come and ask me like as if you can come, but um, send me an email. Let me know. Don't be shy. I'm, I'm happy to answer anything um, that you might want to know. Um, and yeah, I really hope to see lots of you in language GCSEs next year.